Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm finally going to talk about the AMD Ryzen 7 2700X and the Intel Core i7-8700K. Yes, yes, it kind of gets repetitive, at least for me, but I haven't let you guys know my opinions on which of these two CPUs is the right one for you. The choice is not as simple as you might expect. And before fanboys go crazy, listen, the 2700X as well as the 8700K are excellent processors, but neither of them are perfect. One performs better in one aspect, the other does something else better. Right now, at the time of this video, the price of the i7-8700K has increased a little again. It is 350 US dollars, whereas the 2700X can be picked up for 320 dollars. But what are you getting for your money? And from a gamer, content creator or streamer's perspective, which CPU suits you best? First of all, I'd like to address the CPU cooler situation. I'd like to point out that at a price point of $350, you aren't getting any cooler included with the 8700K, whereas $320 gets you the 2700X plus quite the epic and capable RGB cooler, namely the Wraith Prism. So while it's not a super big deal, it could be something you might have to take into consideration, depending on your budget. In terms of specs, the 2700X features two more cores and therefore four more threats. While the clock speeds on the second generation of Ryzen CPUs have increased, Intel still clocks higher, even though a quite low base clock is stated for Coffee Lake. Then we of course see a slight difference in manufacturing process, higher TDP on AMD side, quite a noticeable amount of more cache on the 2700X that applies for both L2 and L3 cache, and finally, in theory, the 2700X supports higher RAM speeds natively. Practically speaking, the 8700K does better in that regard, though. Oh, and then there's the integrated graphics, which most of us don't use. So let's get straight to the point. For this test, I've ran both CPUs at stock speeds and then overclocked both to a somewhat reasonable maximum without going all crazy with voltage that would absurdly increase temperatures and power consumption. And obviously, one thing's certain, you really can't go wrong with any of those CPUs. They both do an incredibly good job. You can game, stream, render videos and so much more. There's not a huge difference. But if you look closely as we're used to, Intel's i7-8700K all in all remains the ultimate gaming beast. The 720p tests as always are there to showcase the full gaming potential of the CPU by eliminating any GPU bottleneck. But all in all, the 8700K simply is the faster gaming chip, mainly due to its high single core performance. But the 2700X is no slouch either and does manage to keep up fairly well. You are still enjoying a very high frame rate with that particular CPU. A win for the Ryzen counterpart is productivity. Depending on the software you use, there is a very noticeable difference between the 8700K and 2700X in video editing and or rendering aspects. The 2700X sure does take the lead there with its high multi-core performance, probably making it the better processor for content creators. But what about overclocking? Well, as it turns out, XFR2 and Precision Boost 
2 on the Ryzen 7 2700X are working so well, it makes very little to no sense overclocking the 2700X. In fact, you could be hurting single core performance that way, since on its own, the 2700X is capable of boosting up to like 4.35 GHz on a couple of cores. The 8700K overclocked to 4.8 GHz is a whole different story though. By doing that, you are further increasing its single core as well as multi core performance by a noticeable margin. And while an overclocked 8700K doesn't necessarily always lead to amazing FPS gains in games, it sure does allow the i7 to catch up with the 2700X multi core wise. Still, the 2700X still dominates in that regard. The 8700K dominates in single core areas and in games. The temperatures aren't too bad on either of the two, but I would say it's a bit harder to keep temperatures down on the 8700K, especially if overclocked. The power consumption, however, does look better on Intel side. Unload the 2700X obviously consumes quite a bit of power. For being an 8 core, not too bad actually, but nonetheless, it sure is a difference. So if you're a gamer and are just doing that, I'd go with the 8700K. If you're a content creator, edit images and videos and do lots of rendering as well as streaming, I'd advise you to go for the 2700X. However, from a price to performance point of view, I feel like the Ryzen 7 2700X has a better value. It's a little cheaper, unlike with the 8700K, we in fact do get a CPU cooler included, and all in all, the CPU does everything remarkably well. But no one should expect gaming performance on the same level as with the 8700K. That 8700K still remains king, at least for gamers. And yeah, that wraps it up, I think. I hope this video could make your CPU choice a little easier, and now all I have to do is wait for the fanboys to arrive and comment on this matter. And with that said, thanks for watching, guys.